What's up guys, I'm Lex and welcome to something a little bit different but a question I get asked all the time and it's about the tattoos. Should you get them? Can you get them when you weight lift? And what do mine mean? I'm going to answer all those questions right now. So should you get tattoos? Personally, my opinion, hell yes. But you have to make sure that you're getting some serious artwork when you opt to get your tattoo. Don't go and pick something off a wall and certainly don't wander into any old tattoo studio and assume that the artist knows what they're doing. The number one thing you need to know about tattooing is it's not really a monitored profession in terms of you don't need qualifications to be a tattoo artist. You just need a shop, some tattoo guns and some ink. That's a little bit scary. So do your research on your artists and make sure that you pick somebody that is a specialist at the style that you like. Get the person that's the best and don't be a cheapskate. Saving a couple of hundred quid to have some lopsided nipples on your naked woman tattoo isn't worth it. They're on you for life. It works out as pennies over your lifetime. Spend the money, get something beautiful. If you want your work to be the best from the artist that you choose, don't give them something to copy and paste. Give them an idea and let them work it for you. So I went in and I had a hundred ideas in one and my tattoo artist, Lisa, she was like, no. I was like, what do you mean no? I'm the customer. Customer's always right. She went, you're not right, you're wrong. You're really wrong. You can't have all those little, little things all going on in one space. I thought I had more room than I had and it also would have been a lot more contradictory. If I had not listened to Lisa, right now I would have skulls and angels and floral and a griffin and it wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have made sense. In my head at the time it did, but she taught me out of it and I'm forever happy that she did because what I have now is a beautiful piece of art that makes sense. So don't take offense when you're going with your tattoo artist if they look at your idea and poo poo it or shun you and say, actually, I don't think it's the best thing. Don't take offense. They're trying to help you out. Is there a stigma still with tattoos? I really don't think there is. Tattoos are super mainstream now. They're very fashionable. And the amount of quality artists that are out there really pushing the tattoo world and the quality of work that they put out into that world is now bigger and better and brighter and more vibrant than ever. But anything kind of hands, neck, face is all still a little bit taboo but it's all your own body it's all your own choice at the end of the day all we can do here is offer you some advice on how to best go about maybe getting your first tattoo rather than getting something that you might later regret because you got something that was over fashionable rather than something that means something to you that takes me on to my next point how long should you wait before getting a tattoo personally and obviously all of this is going to be my own opinion but i waited at least four years from deciding what i wanted to getting it and that was something as simple as this here this is my mum's signature it's very simple it's inoffensive but i waited four years why because i had the idea and then i sat on it and four years later i still wanted it so that means i hadn't got bored of it it wasn't a fad it wasn't a fashion it was something i genuinely wanted and that's the key to picking a tattoo it's picking something that means something to you that isn't driven by a fashion a trend a celebrity because they run out of time. They have a, they have a time frame on them as to when they're going to run out of being cool. But something that means something to you on a personal level isn't about being cool. It's about sentimentality. It's about meaning. It's about every time you look at that piece of work, that writing, that quote, whatever, it takes you back to that moment in time you got it. It's part of your history and it's what makes you you and it gives you those memories. That's what a tattoo should be. It shouldn't be like a trainer that's cool for this year, but out the next. <laughs> Huh. Will your tattoos get fucked up if you weight lift? My opinion again, but no. If, if you tell the tattoo artist what your intentions are in the future and you place your tattoos correctly. Chances are, unless you're gonna go down some kind of Bane-like scientific route of jabbing yourself with the steroids and God knows what, you are not gonna blow up or balloon up or grow fast enough to screw up any tattoo work. Especially not if it's something like a sleeve or a big piece of artwork because a big area on your body is not going to be affected Say you've got a tiny tattoo on an area on the bicep that may grow, yes, that might get a little bit stretched and a little bit warped, but when the artwork gets bigger, the chances of that kind of effect taking place are gonna be reduced. Plus, if you're smart, if you know what you're going to do in the future, if you know you're gonna keep lifting, if it's gonna be a big part of your life, like I knew it was going to be, the placing of my pieces on my arm are set to specific areas so that if I do grow, if I do develop, they're actually not gonna get messed up. In fact, they're only gonna enhance certain parts of the imagery that I've chosen. And we'll cover that in a little bit. Now, before we get on to what this lovely piece of beautiful artwork means to me, 
Let me just tell you what you definitely shouldn't be getting. Because these are all hard and fast rules that we've learned from the past that we see now. And you know the ones I'm talking about when you see them in the street and you kind of go, ooh, early 2000s. What you want to avoid is anything that's, like I said, fashion. The barbed wire, the tribal, the Chinese the dragons, you know, in the Chinese kind of hieroglyphic tribally kind of God knows what. All those things, they were pure fashion. They were either driven by film or franchise or social media of some form. Stick with the classics, stick with the traditional. We have so many beautiful pieces that you can pick from. You can even take actual artwork from a painting that you love or an artist that you love that's not a tattooist but an artist and you can transfer that into your tattoo. Give it some kind of personal meaning and that's what you want to be looking for. Do not go into a tattoo place, look on the wall and go, I want that one. You don't want that one. So moving on to my tattoo and the meanings behind it. Yes, it's all pictures, there's very little writing. In fact, there's no writing other than my mother's signature here, but it still tells an entire story, but in picture form. Every little piece has a meaning to me. It's a part of my history, it's a part of my childhood, it's a part of my life, and it represents the people within my life and time spent with them. And I'll show you how I achieved that by going through each little bit individually. The first one being this, as I said, my mother's signature. The reason I got this, Artists sign their work. My mum created me. She was a massive inspiration to me during my uh, time growing up, going through life, making decisions. She never said, don't try something. She never kind of steered me away. Even if I had the craziest, stupidest idea, if I was passionate about it, all she would ever do was support me. Give it a go, give it a try. She was never afraid of letting you try something to fail it so you could learn. And that to me was a real inspiration. It's definitely curved the way that I live my own life. So to represent that, and because obviously my mother's gonna be in my life forever, um, I, that's why I did it. I got my mother's signature on my arm. It's in her handwriting. She wrote it for me to get this done. So it, it means a lot. It's a personal thing. And every time I look at it, I love it. Now moving on to my, I would, I would call it a half sleeve. It comes slightly over onto my chest, a little bit on the collarbone and around to the back. So it's a nice balance. This is where it finished for the artwork that I decided to have and I kind of love it, how it finishes off there. So I was gonna have a full sleeve, but because of the way this sits and how naturally it kind of conforms to my shape, I actually decided to leave it here. So if I do get any more artwork, it will not be to finish this off as a full sleeve. If anything, it will be a half sleeve from wrist to elbow on this side. So I'll have a full sleeve, but over two arms. So what you need to know first off is the actual finished product of my tattoo here wasn't the original idea I started with. I actually wanted it in black and grey to start with and a little bit more open because I thought if I left it open you'd be able to see kind of the muscle underneath the tattoo. Turns out the moment you cover it with anything, even if you leave skin showing through, you can't see muscle tone. Here, you know what? We're going to colour it in, at which point my tattoo artist, Lisa, lovely lady, check her out, her links will be in the description, she went, yes! Originally mine started here with the main piece, which is the griffin. This was always the main piece, that was always going to be the idea, this is what the whole tattoo was built around. The reason it's a griffin, my last name, family name, is griffin. The griffin is a mythical beast, it's part lion, part eagle, and I love it, it's a cool looking thing. Not a griffon, I'd like to point out, a griffin. That is in black and grey, it, it has a lot of white ink put into it, so I have to be very careful in the sun. That means I sunblock this bad boy all the time to make sure that I maintain the colours and the whiteness because I tan very easily, and if you tan underneath your tattoo, you make the whole thing look creamier, so you don't get that pop in the colour as much because you're kind of dulling it down with the olive skin tone underneath. Just something to bear in mind there if you do feel like getting some colours or vibrance in there. Plus, to keep that black and grey, the contrast between the white and the black, again, keep it sunblocked. Factor 50, minimum. So the griffin is set on my arm, across the shoulder, down onto the lateral head of the tricep, and then it wraps around onto that long head of the tricep here. The reason it comes like that is because the wing comes down onto the part of the tricep that is most likely to grow. So if this part of my arm gets bigger, all that happens is, is the wing expands out and it looks completely normal. So the body is set in an area of the arm where there's not gonna be much change. And that's what I was talking about in terms of positioning your tattoo to think of the future ahead. So if you want to get something, and you don't want it affected by the way you lift, just position the tattoos. And that actually takes me on to the next one of my bigger pieces on here, and that is the robin underneath. So I have a robin sat on a stopwatch here, and the reason I have this is because my great aunt was like my grandma. My grandma passed away before I was born, so my great aunt, my grandfather's sister, she was like my grandma. She was there when I grew up. We used to stay over at her house all the time. She had dog called Henry, we loved life, we used to go fishing together, feed the ducks, all that. And we also have a little visitor every single year to her garden and it was a robin. And I used to have a little mug, a mug you will have seen if you follow me on other social medias, 
I've always got my cup of tea and it's a Robin mug. And on that mug is this very specific Robin, which you can now see on my arm. The reason that means a lot to me is because that mug was mine and mine specifically at my great aunt's house. No one else was allowed to touch it, no one else was allowed to use it. So it's got a huge sentimental value. Sadly, she passed away. And um, that is why I have my Robin on top of a timepiece. It was to represent the time that I spent with her and now that she's passed, and that's what it represents to me. So not only is it a lovely piece of work, it also means something to me. Every time I look at it, it makes me feel happy. And, and that's something that, um, you know, that I, nothing else can really do um, other than the mug, which I still have to this day. So you can kind of see where this is going in terms of like, it's a family, the pictures represent my family, my time and history. And that, that doesn't change throughout the whole piece. Because as we move back around to the front, the filigree here, this is actually, this isn't really sentimental, it's just something I like the look of and it filled well with the kind of style of what I was doing. But right below that, it's because it's that floral thing, I have, you can see I have a rose here. This is, a, I think, a classic English rose. And then on the back here, you'll see I have another rose, which is a little bit pink, and that is a Queen Elizabeth rose. These are the flowers grown in the garden of my grandfather and my great aunt. So this is literally a picture taken from a rose in my grandfather's garden and that was put here and he used to have a trellis of roses in his back garden where I used to play as a kid and I'll forever remember those. And again, the Queen Elizabeth rose at the back uh, represents my time spent with him and my great aunt together because they both had that love of roses. Did I have three sisters if you do not know that about me. I'm the eldest, three younger sisters. Yes, it was a nightmare growing up. There was girly shit everywhere. To represent them, I have three butterflies on my body in their favorite colors, which represents them. So one, two, three, represents my three sisters. Now you're thinking, you've got a tattoo of your mom, but is your mom in your arm on the other side? Hell yeah, she is. So my mom's favorite flower is the cherry blossom. And you can see throughout all of this and intertwined with all the other features is the cherry blossom. And to me, that makes sense because intertwined into all my relationships was obviously my mother was that link to all those relationships, my sisters, my grandfather and whatnot. So in keeping in that theme, moving up to the top here, I have some tulips up on the top and these represent my lady little laney who you will all know if you follow me they are one of her favorite flowers so she chose those and they go right at the top just kind of crowning this whole story because obviously i have family sisters moving up to the top and obviously the crowning part of most people's lives is when they get married and start their own family so that's why they sit up there my latest addition here is the bumblebee and there's a couple of reasons that I got this. One is a happy reason and one is a sad reason. And the reason I got it is the, the idea at the time, it's the two meanings in, in one symbol. So for those of you that remember, there was a bomb that went off in uh, an arena in Manchester, killing a number of innocent people, children, mothers, families. And there was a big campaign to getting a tattoo of a bumblebee and then you, you would give some money to charity because the bumblebee represented manchester it was the manchester bee that's what it was so um to me i wanted I, when i found out about that happened i was actually abroad in on holiday and uh laney told me i remember in the morning and you know when something just hits you and you don't take it in so like they, they tell you because it's close to home and um you, you can't kind of take it in you don't believe it so uh, you know uh, I was, I've never genuinely felt that kind of angry in my in my life at humanity. I don't know why, it just it really struck, I think it's because it's close to home. It's Manchester's, you know, half an hour away from me here. It's where I grew up. It's where I spent a lot of my childhood. And the fact that it was like innocent people and children especially, families, and even it affected families of people that we knew directly that live in some of the villages around here. So I, I wanted somehow to represent that feeling. To, I didn't want to forget it. I didn't want to forget that um that moment in time where there was that pain and that hurt but also the way manchester and the north came together after that was just so inspiring there was so much outreach and and love shared for those that had suffered and how the whole community came together was was almost beautiful so kind of that you know the rainbow in the rain kind of effect but not only that the bumblebee represents something to me um as a, a biologist i did a biology degree the bumblebee's a vital part of the food chain. And if you if the bumblebee leaves, everything becomes disrupted. It's such a small little thing, this little bumblebee you see flying around, yet it's so, so important. And those all those meanings kind of combined together just meant a lot to me, enough for me to put it on my body. And also, you know, at the same time, I donated money to charity for doing that. And um, 
uh, that was the simple meaning for that, and and it was it was as if it was meant to be because I'd never this space here at the back I kind of left unfilled, and it, and it needed something to go in there, and the bumblebee fit perfectly. So it was just one of those, um, and that kind of brings me to the end of all the meanings of the major pieces in my in my tattoo. The color blue and the, the green and blue wash that goes through the whole piece um, was actually something I didn't want. I didn't like the idea of having blue or green kind of colors on my arm. But Lisa the Tattooist, again, as I said, trust your artist. She said, trust me with the colors of doing this, it will look beautiful. And it is literally one of the most common comments that I get from my tattoo is how people love the blue green kind of hue that runs through the whole piece. So I hope that that's answered a couple of questions. Uh, I hope it's helped you have a think. If honestly you have it, you, you want really want to get something, but you don't quite know what to do. You've got some ideas. Hit me up in the comment section below. I will happily have a chat through with you and give you some some of my thoughts on on how I came to get the pieces that I got and and how I adjusted my ideas uh, from a, what I originally wanted to what I got now and and why they were better. And other than that, oh, that's one of the questions answered. Done, done, dusted. The next one will be how do I style my hair? And if you want to see that, let me know in the comment section below because that would be a very specific video. But if you want to see hairstyling kind of tutorial thing, I'll do it. I'll do it. You want it? I'll do it. Other than that, tattoos. I love them. Great artists are out there. Find them. Don't be stingy. Take care of it once you've got it and get something that means something to you. So every time you look at it, you'll never be bored, just inspired and happy that you had it done. I'm Lex. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. We're out.